May the Lord give you his peace. A reading from the Franciscan Book of Saints by Marion A. Habig, September 22nd, Blessed Lucy of Caltagirone, Virgin, Third Order. Lucy was born a devout and distinguished parents at Caltagirone in Sicily, having watched over her in a special way from her earliest years. When she was six years old, she went to the country with her mother one day, and there climbed a fig tree to pick figs. As frequently happens in the southern part of Europe, a storm arose very suddenly. Lightning struck the tree and split it asunder. The child lay on the ground as if dead. But an old man suddenly stood beside her, picked her up, and led her, as if nothing had happened, to the house to which her mother had run for safety. At the door, Lucy asked her rescuer who he was. He replied, I am St. Nicholas, whom your parents honor in a special way. As a reward, I have taken you under my special protection. Thenceforth, Lucy was devoted to works of piety. It was the greatest pleasure to attend divine services and to be of assistance to the poor. She was just about attained the age of young womanhood when a tertiary from Salerno came to Caltagrione to visit some relatives. She was an object of edification to everybody. Lucy became a companion of this tertiary and then joined the third order herself. When the young woman returned to her native town, Lucy went with her. The young woman received Lucy into her own home and her spiritual daughter, and as a result of her guidance, Lucy made daily progress in perfection. She led a life of recollection and practiced rigorous penance. At the same time, she was sympathetic and kind to the poor and the sick. At the death of her friend, who had been like a mother to her, Lucy entered the convent of the tertiaries of St. Mary Magdalene in Salerno. Even as a novice, she was a model of humility and obedience. Her heart was occupied with the contemplation of the sufferings of Christ, and she endeavored to share her sufferings by crucifying her own flesh. She was favored by God with special graces, and ere long the fame of her sanctity spread far and wide. People came to her from the surrounding towns to ask her prayers and to seek her advice. No one in distress ever left her without being consoled, and at her recommendation many sinners were converted, and pious souls were encouraged to strive for still greater perfection. After a long and painful illness, Lucy entered the joys of heaven on September 26th. It is not quite, it is not quite certain in what year she died, but it was about the year 1400. The numerous miracles that occurred at her grave were ample testimony of her sanctity. A great number of silver eyes have been left at her tomb because many who suffered from eye diseases and even blind persons were cured through her intercession. Pope Leo X confirmed the uninterrupted veneration with which she has been honored. On the Protection of the Saints Consider the great protection which Lucy enjoyed in her youth from St. Nicholas. This saint is a special patron of children because he was so holy a child himself and because he conferred so many favors on children and young people during his lifetime. In order to make known the special love of the saint for children, it is a custom in many places to celebrate his feast day by presenting gifts to children. It would be well if we not only related pious stories about St. Nicholas to the children, but also pointed out the love which he extended to children while he was still on earth, and which impels him in heaven to watch over them, as many instances illustrate. Often recommend your little ones to the protection of St. Nicholas. <clears throat> Consider how Blessed Lucy was guided through life away from home by the protection of her patron and was led to perfection by this saintly friend. From her own experience, the saints in heaven know the dangers that best beset us here on earth. While they were in this vale of tears, they took great pleasure in protecting their fellow men from these dangers and leading them on the right road. Would this pleasure now be denied them in heaven? We are united to them by the communion of saints as members of one body, the Church. They have come closer to the head, who is Christ, and can therefore be of greater assistance to us now during our pilgrimage on earth. Recommend yourself to them and with filial confidence. 
the patron whose name you bear, the patron of the parish to which you belong, and any other to whom you may be especially devoted. Consider how blessed Lucy was a special friend of two mortal men after she had joined the saints in heaven. The precious gift of sight was granted to many persons at her intercession. Among these were the abbess of her own convent, who had become almost totally blind, a young woman who had not had the use of her eyes for fourteen months, a blind servant of the bishop of Salerno, and many others. God grants to certain of his saints special power against certain evils, as we perceive in so many instances. Should we not be grateful for such patrons and confidently call upon the saints, without, of course, neglecting natural remedies? They can doubtless aid us more effectively than the most skilled physicians. Prayer of the Church Almighty and eternal God, by whose favor we pray honor to the merits of all, thy saints, inasmuch as so many are pleading for us, we beseech thee to confer upon us the fullness of thy mercy, for which we long. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he show his face to you and have mercy upon you. May he turn his countenance toward you and give you his peace. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Pax Bonum.